Then the Bank of England has held interest rates at 5.25%. It's the first time they've not risen in almost two years. But well, what does that actually mean for all our finances and what impact will it have on the current cost of living crisis? Well, Martin Lewis joins us now. So... Morning, Martin. Morning. Uh, Good morning. There you go. Morning. Lots of questions there that you're the person that can answer. What does this mean? Well, I think the most urgent people who need to be thinking about this are savers. Now, it's quite strange, isn't it? Here we are talking a story about Bank of England hasn't done something. But markets move based on expectations. And what we've had this week is on Wednesday, we had inflation figures that were lower than expected. And then we had the Bank of England not putting up interest rates when the markets had expected it puts up interest rates. And that has changed the generalised expectations for the future of interest rates. And that's not just some intangible it sits over there that has a real impact on savings rates so it is likely we're going to see savings rates drop and most specifically because easy access savings the variable rates that most people have where you can put your money in and take them out when you like they tend to move with the bank of england base rate but the rate at which you can get fixed savings which pay more where you lock your money away for a set period to earn more from it they tend to move with expectations of future interest rates. So it's those fixed savings that we're talking about. And there's one particularly good deal at the moment that I'll talk about in a moment. But the, the thing to understand is we think, nobody knows, that means the top fixed savings rates are likely to shave down a little bit. But the, the, what I put out on social media yesterday and the trick that you need to understand at the moment is if you go and open a fixed savings now, you normally have a week or two weeks or in some cases up to a month in which to fund it and you can still take your money out if you change your mind. So what I would suggest people do now, those who've been looking at getting fixed savings where they're able to lock their money away for a year or two years or three years, is you go and open a top fixed savings account now. Open it, but if you want to see what's going to happen, whether interest rates and other savings rates are going to come down, you don't fund it until the last minute. So you can have the facility available at today's high rates. And if rates do drop, you can plonk your money in there and you're locked in on that rate for a year or two. And if rates don't drop, or even if they went up the other way, unlikely, but it could happen, markets move all the time, well, then you just open another account and you don't put your money in this one. And that's the clarion call I've got. And there are, I know there are often people who are surprised, there are more savings accounts in the UK than there are debt accounts. Whenever we do phone-ins on the show, we talk about that, we get more questions about savings than anything else. Many people, savings were built up during the pandemic, do have money in savings at the moment. They're desperate to earn as much interest as possible because this is their nest egg or their safety net. And actually, right now, if you can afford to lock money away, go open a top fixed savings account and then just hold on a week or two to see what happens before you put your money in. Is that the same, Martin, with regards to cash ISAs as well? Yes, it is. Fixed rate cash ISAs. A cash ISA is just a savings account that you don't put money in. But I have to say, the first thing I'd be looking at right now, there is one sort of jaw-droppingly outstanding account on the market. And, it come, and the reason it's jaw-droppingly outstanding is not just because it pays the highest rate, which it does, which is 6.2%, but because of who is offering it. It's offered by what's called NSNI, which more, most people will know by its old name of National Savings. So this is the state-owned financial institute. And the reason that that makes it interesting is when you normally put money in the savings account, you're protected up to £85,000 per person per financial institution. But you put money in NSNI, National Savings, people used to get it through the post office in the old days. It's not the same as post office savings. Well, all your money is backed by the state. And these accounts allow people to put up to a million of pounds in. They're called the Guaranteed Equity Bond. It's effectively a one-year fix. Or the Guaranteed Income Bond, if you want to take your money out each month. You can put from 500 up to a million pounds in, and all of it is protected. It's the highest rate of any fix on the market at 6.2%. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, a million pounds. But quite a few people have sold houses a year ago or two years ago, have that chunk of money, haven't decided to rebuy because they're waiting to see what's happening to the property market. They're having to spread it over a number of accounts. Well, if you were in that fortunate position to be sitting on a large amount of cash, to be able to put all of it in the top rate in perfect safety, 
is relatively unheard of. And I don't think those NSNI accounts are going to be around for very long. So 6.2% in total safety with a big name really is quite an eye stand, uh, an eye wateringly different deal that's available right now. And they only have to have a certain amount of money coming into NSNI. You talk about cash ISAs. Now, I used to be a big, I always used to say, your money is nicer in a cash ISA. And then I stopped saying it because a cash ISA is all about tax. When you get interest on savings, you're eligible to pay tax on it. But in 20, or was it 16 or 17? I can't remember, gone off the top of my head. A, a new thing called the personal savings account, uh, personal savings allowance was in, introduced. And that means you can earn a thousand pounds of interest a year without paying tax on it if you're a basic rate taxpayer, 20%. 500 pounds interest if you're a top rate taxpayer and that took most people out of paying tax and as normal savings pay more than cash ISAs it meant they should just put money in normal savings because you don't need to protect it but now interest rates have gone up a thousand pounds of interest can be generated by 10 15 20 thousand pounds of savings which is starting to get into the realms that some not so rich you know savers have people do have that money out there especially pensioners and if you're a taxpayer it's now worth considering have you used your cash ISA if you're going to generate enough interest that, that you're going to use your £1,000 a year of interest allowance as a basic rate taxpayer? So cash ISAs are back. They're just savings accounts that you don't pay tax on. So if you're going to pay tax on savings, open a cash ISA first and then look at normal savings afterwards. Fascinating. Now, what about those that aren't in the fortunate position of saving? They'll be looking at the interest rate, thinking, what do we do about mortgages? All of that. Very briefly, what's the best thing to do? Well, uh, the, the answer on mortgages is exactly the reverse of what happens with savings. On mortgages, again, that whole in inflation and interest rates have gone up by less than it is expected to means it's possible fixed rates, the rate you can get a new fixed deal on a mortgage, will come down in the short term. Where it will go in the longer term is incredibly difficult to say without a crystal ball. But I think we already saw yesterday a few of the big mortgage lenders just slightly bringing down the cost of their new fixed rate deals. So if people are in that imminent position, then certainly it's probably going to be cheaper to get a fixed rate today than it was this time last week. Whether they're going to come down to a much more significant level, we just don't know. What the Bank of England has said about interest rates is effectively, OK, we're not putting them up, but we expect them to stay high for a good time yet to come. And, and, and it's all on how the markets and there are various other factors that feed into that. Read what's going on with interest rates. You really need to look at your own internal finances. If what you want is surety and you know what you're doing, then fixing gives you surety and fix longer because you get longer surety and actually longer term fixes are actually cheaper. If you can afford to ride the markets, not. And if you're really struggling, one of the advantages in the mortgage sector is there are mortgages, mortgage brokers out there who can give you one on one help at finding the best mortgage for you and trying to give you the advice you need that's bespoke and specific whereas I can only talk in general terms because I'm talking to millions of people. So it's somewhat different. So I would be using a mortgage broker at the moment if you're struggling to get the deal that you need. But in terms of uh, the interest rates not going up, of course, well, while for savers in a way it's a bad thing because I'm saying lock in quickly in case rates come down, uh, for mortgage holders looking to come on fixes, it may well be a good thing. But it all depends on where we go over the next few months, to be honest. Martin, thank you very much for joining us. It's always great to get your insights on important days like this. It's good to see you this morning.